Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me today. Today I am going to be using my new fine debossing tip in my Cricut Maker. This is a quick swap tip. So you will need a quick swap housing to go with it, but I will explain all of that later on in the video. I'm gonna be using a few different materials today and comparing how the debossing tip works on them. Um, I did use some glitter as well, just so that we don't wanna leave the glitter out. As usual, everything that I've used in today's video will be listed down below in the description. You can get this debossing tip from lots of different places. I bought mine from Cricut directly, but you can get it from Amazon and places like that as well. I will link it all down below for you, as I just said. So let's jump straight in to using this new bit of kit. So here we are then in Cricut Design Space and the first thing we're going to do is go up to the Images tab and just click on there. And I'm going to find an image that is suitable for using with the debossing tip. So what I will do is go over to the left hand side and all the different filters that we've got here. Then I'm going to go on to Operation Type. And you can see here it gives us four different options so we can choose Cut, Draw, print then cut or cut and draw and what we want it to do is draw only so I'm going to choose draw only and then I'm going to have a look at what it has got on here for us so let's choose this happy birthday so let's add that to the canvas so it's on the canvas now and as you can see it's a drawn quite a thin line in it so at the top here we've got the operation type that this is doing at the moment and it is a pen drawn image so what we can do is just click on the little drop down arrow here and then we have all these different options here that we can choose so we've got the cutting options at the top and then the drawing options in the middle and then print then cut at the bottom we don't need to worry about that one so obviously at the moment it's set onto pen here we could choose foil score or deboss and that is the one that we want so let's click on deboss and it makes it quite thick and that is what the debossing looks like when you've got it on your screen so now what we can do is also go over to text and let's type in my name and I'm going to put it there underneath and again it is set at the moment as a basic cut so if we go down again to deboss in the operation type and it's going to come out like this and because it is a drawn text it will draw it like a bubble writing so we can change the font to a writing font and my favorite writing font is Alyssa it's a stencil script font but I just really like it uh, let's just go up again and change that basic cut to deboss there we go and it is going to do it as two separate lines but I quite like that when it's debossing and you'll see why when we do it so next I'm just going to select both of those items by dragging over them and then I'm going to align those horizontally there we go and then I'm going to attach them together because we've attached that now when we go through to the make it screen our make it screen mat is going to mirror exactly what we've got on the canvas okay so let's click on make it and as you can see the mat that we're going to cut on mirrors exactly what was on our canvas just now so if we go through to continue we're going to choose our basic materials now in the settings here and you'll notice that quite a lot of them are greyed out and these are the ones that Cricut don't recommend that you use the debossing tip on however you can but you just have to choose a different setting so if we go into browse all materials you'll be able to see all of the materials that Cricut recommends for using the debossing tip and there's quite a few still but not that many in my favorites as you can see so I'm going to choose poster board setting for this one because I'm going to use some foiled 
cardstock for this. So let's switch over to the machine and I'll show you setting up the mat. I've got a few different materials here and most of them are little scraps or pieces that I've used before for other projects. So I just want to see how the debossing tool actually handles all these different materials. And on the base materials list, it does list litter cardstock. So I'm interested to see what it's actually going to look like when it's on there. I've got this foil, which I actually think is going to look nice. And then I've got some of this pearl finish cardstock as well. And this is quite thick. It's 300 GSM, so it's a good size thickness to try out with the new tip. So let's pop some of this onto a mat. I'm just going to use a light grip mat for this little test today. I'm going to start off with this gold. So I'm just going to pop it up in the corner of my mat and then get my trusty brayer, give it a good press down on there. You can see my camera in the mirror of this card, it's so shiny. And one thing I would recommend to you, this is a bit off topic, but when you are using this sort of card, and again this sort of vinyl as well, which has got a chrome shiny finish on it, don't use a scraper because if you use a scraper, it doesn't matter so much with this because I'm going to show you. If this was actually for a project and I used a scraper on it, it's going to scratch it. You can see the scratches appeared all down there from the scraper. Don't use a scraper on a chrome finished card or vinyl. Always use a brayer. If you don't have a brayer, be very, very careful. Put some fabric over your scraper or use some felt or something like that to cushion this edge and use that instead of just using your scraper on its own because you don't want to damage your material. This is how the debossing tip comes when you buy it and I bought mine just as the tip because I've already got a quick swap housing but if you haven't got a quick swap housing you'll need that as well and you can buy it as a set so you'll get the quick swap housing and the tip in your pack when you buy it. You can get that from loads of different places. Um, John Lewis sell it, um, Amazon have got it and Hobbycraft. But if you've already got a quick swap housing, you'll be able to just buy the tip which will work out cheaper for you usually. So I'm going to open this up. Okay, so it comes like every other Quickit tip does with a little set of instructions. Okay, so these just say um, improper use may cause damage. Before use, read help.quicket.com forward slash deboss. So that's just a link to the Quicket website for a bit more info about the debossing tip. So this is what it comes like in a little plastic pack. Let's open it up. So we've got number 21 is on the actual tip itself. So each of the Quicket tips is numbered. I'm going to just grab another one to show you now from my little stash here. So this is the single scoring wheel and its number is 01. Then this one is the double scoring wheel and its number is 02. So that helps when you're trying to search online to look for the particular blade or particular tip that you want because they are all numbered which is very very useful okay so to use this you're going to need a quick swap housing and this is what it looks like and it is different to the housings that you get with the knife blade and the rotary blade and if you've got a maker one of the older ones like mine you will have received a rotary blade when you bought it this is a knife blade and it's got the little protective cap on it here because it's really sharp as you can see. And these look the same but they're not the same. So this is a permanent housing for these two tips and you can't change them. You can't take this off and interchange it with the quick swap tools. So a lot of people get confused especially with the rotary blade. Um, thinking that it's actually a scoring blade when it isn't so that's just something to bear in mind there so I'm just going to pop those back in my little tool caddy so with this it's super super easy to use and all you need to do is the little plunger on the top here and then you've got your little tip here so all you want to do is press down the plunger and then just pop the tip on let it go of the plunger 
and it's on there now and it's nice and secure and it moves around and the cog will move and everything so now that's ready to go into the machine here we are then at my machine and you can see in clamp B I've got my fine point blade so I want to take that out and just pop it on the top there and then I've got my debossing tip and my quick swap housing and it's put together already one thing that you do want to be careful of when you're putting a quick swap housing into your machine is that you don't accidentally depress the plunger at the top because I've done that a couple of times before you put it in and you close the clamp and then you realize that your tip has fallen off and your machine is happily starting its first pass so just make sure that you don't press that down as you are putting it in just for extra safety so I'm just going to pop that in and I'm just aligning my cog with the cog on the back of the machine just pop it in there and then close it up as you can see it's a one-handed action you don't need two hands for this so here is the cardstock on our mat I'm just going to pop it in by pressing the double-ended arrow the flashing C button is already on the go let's press that As usual, the machine will register the tool. This is perfectly normal. So on the screen of the computer now, it's doing the debossing and we've got the percentage bar going up again like we always would do. It does also say deboss, tool may lift and spin. And that's perfectly normal, as you can see, because it's on a cog, it does need to move and it is lifting up and it's turning it around as necessary. So I'm just going to quickly run through the same design process on all of my different materials and then I'll come back and we'll compare which one looks the best. When I come to change my material on the mat and I'm going to use the glitter card stock now, I'm going to just go to change my material so that it gets a good representation of changing your settings. So just go up to where it says poster board in the bold and just click on it and then it'll take you back to your material settings so if you haven't got it as a favorite you can search for it in browse or materials but I've got it as a as a setting here in my favorites because I use it so often I'm just going to click on there and then I'll just carry on doing my debossing on my glitter cardstock okay so I have just finished off this plain cardstock so I'm just going to flip my mat over and bend it back to, ooh, it's gone through a little bit there that's exciting so this is what I wanted to do was see the comparison between all the different materials and see how they behave really because to be honest I think it's really putting down some major pressure to achieve this debossing look and I do think that if you're going to be making a card out of this um, you can can you see it let me try and adjust the light slightly yeah so you can see that there now so if you were going to put this on the front of a card, say, for instance, or you were making a gift tag or something using debossing, you're going to want to cover the back up if you're just using medium cardstock. So this is what this one is. This is A4 Premium Card Pack Bright Shades from Hobbycraft. It is 180 GSM, so it's not thin. You know, it's a pretty decent thickness of card, but it has damaged the back of it, so that's interesting. Okay, then the glitter card. This was an absolute no, <laughs> in my opinion. And I shall show you why. So I use this scrap piece, but you can see it has basically pulled the glitter off the top of the cardstock. And also I used this piece here, which was, um, this is like a piece of card which has a, f a foil film on top of it and it's okay for cutting and stuff like that but clearly for debossing it is not a thing so I would steer away from glitter cardstock even though there is a setting for that I'm not sure that that's going to work too well these two are the star of the show so this is the chrome which is the one we did first it's really shiny I love this and it has shown up so so well you can see on there it's got a nice thick debossed 
writing on there, the lines are nice and crisp, it looks great. The back again does have a bit of damage. You're going to want to line this with maybe another piece of card or maybe just a piece of paper, just decorative paper out of a pack, just to make it look nice so that you can't see that. This is the pearl finish card. This is 300 GSM, so it's pretty thick and it looks great. It looks lovely on this side. It's done the debossing really, really well. I'm pleased with the way this one has worked. And then on the back as well, there is really minimal damage to the back of the cardstock. You can only really feel it when you rub your fingers over it, which is good. Um, you can't see it all that much. I guess if you were really, really looking for it, you'd see it. But, you know, if you were making that into a card or a gift tag, you wouldn't need to line it. It looks quite nice as it is. So those are the comparisons between all those materials. As I said before, I did change the settings so you can see that I've changed the settings on my materials to make it fair. Then I have also done this, which is another piece of this card. And this just shows you how different using a different colour makes it. So I think the pink shows up better than the blue. I don't know why. And because of that reason, I decided to grab some of this um, gilding wax that I actually bought a while ago. And I was going to use this on some glass etching just to see if it worked for colouring because I know you can use rub and buff but this apparently according to the lady is the same thing so I tried it on my debossed piece of card so I did another piece I just rubbed my gilding wax over it I just put it on a little brush here and painted a bit on and then got a tissue and just sort of spread it out and I think it really shows the difference. So you can see with the two, I think the gold one shows up better. Don't really know how it works. don't understand the difference between the two, but it looks good and I'm pleased with it. So that is another way of colouring it. Another way of colouring your debossing, if you wanted to, I don't know whether this pen will show up, but I'm going to try it. So you get your debossing and get a pen and you just follow the lines of the debossing really carefully. This is not very easy to do but I think it looks quite nice. What do you think? So let's just go over a little bit more. I know the light's not very good for this because my lights are on the wrong side for me being right handed but I haven't got space on the other side for it. Let's just keep going around here a little bit and I'll show it you. But you can probably see it more now. This could be time consuming if you've got a lot to do but if you're just doing a single thing for somebody this is a good way of doing it and I think it makes it show up really nicely. Actually, the pink and the gold look nice together, don't they? Just sort of trying to keep the nib of the pen in the channel that the debossing tip has created. Which is easier said than done in a couple of places, but looks quite nice though pleasing on the eye as they say. Let's just do the G. I'm always trying to think of different ways to change stuff and this is a good way of making something really individual to yourself. You can see I've just coloured in this one with the pink glitter pen and this is a gold glitter pen. I don't know whether you can still buy these. These are from Typo, um, the store by where I live closed down and these were really cheap. I think I got them for like 17 pence each and I love them because they're super glittery. Um, so there you go, look at that. It looks really nice doesn't it? I like the gold against the pink and then the pink on pink looks really nice as well. You can see a couple of bits where I messed it up and went out of the line but I think with practice and going maybe a little bit slower you would 
perfect this technique so i hope that you have enjoyed this video if you've got any questions about how to use the debossing tip please drop them down below i'll be really happy to hear from you and any questions that you've got i will try to answer as quickly as i can if you have enjoyed this video i'd love to see you again for the next one so don't forget to subscribe drop me a like on this video if you have learned something new and as usual have a great week take care of yourselves and i'll see you soon bye